over here thinking that you, you, your baby is too good to do uh, chores around here. Dorothy, like, no, that's not it. That's not it. But even way, why, why my baby got to do chores? Uh, Mary, like, uh, because she live in this house, girl. If you don't like my rules, then you and your baby can get the fuck out. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share the Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of $5. You babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about Etta James, Rage to Survive by David Ritz and Etta James, part three. Driving slowly, very slowly, the woman took me back to the house. Mama Lou had suffered another stroke. The last stroke, Mama the good mama was dead. I went blank, memories blurred, a barrage of phone calls, frantic activity, people running around, daddy arriving, plans for the funeral, Dorothy arriving from San Francisco, taking me to the funeral, me watching them put mama in the ground, me crying and shaking and sobbing until I couldn't stop, wondering what was going to happen, who was going to take care of me, where I would go and what I would do. My heart empty, my head fuzzy, tears running all down my cheeks, looking at daddy, looking at mama in the coffin, all the relatives, mama's sister, daddy's nephews and nieces, cousins, Alice and Willard Jean, everyone coming over and asking after me, wanting to know about my plans. Dorothy standing there aloof, far away, not saying a word, grabbing my hand and leading me away from the cemetery. Dorothy taking me from the graveyard to the Greyhound. Now, just like that, okay, this little girl don't know what the hell is going on. She haven't even had time to absorb the fact that the mother that she knew, the mother that nurtured and loved her that she knew is gone. Okay. Crazy ass Dorothy just came and snatched the baby up from the funeral, okay, and took her straight to the bus station. The little girl's like, wait a minute, hold on, mama, hold on. Did you ask daddy, could you take me? Mama Dorothy, or Mother Dorothy, you know, the crazy one, said, uh-uh, I'm not leaving you with that man. I don't know him, he a pervert anyway. I don't trust him, I don't trust him. Uh, Dorothy, did you trust him when you gave the baby over to him in the first place? Were him and Mama Lou, did you trust him then? This little girl and her mother are on the Greyhound bus going to uh, God knows where. All right. The little girl falls asleep, okay? She's awakened by her mammy, Dorothy, and the bus driver getting into it, okay? The little girl opened her eyes like, Mama, Mama, what's going on, Mama? What's wrong? I asked her, wiping sleep from my eyes. This son of a bitch thinks he can put us off this goddamn bus. Not think, lady. I know I can, said the driver. Your tickets say Fresno. Well, this here is Fresno. San Francisco is going to cost you an extra four bucks, okay? Dorothy didn't reply, okay? Dorothy ain't say shiz, right? Little Etta James is looking up at her crazy ass mammy, knowing that, mammy, you ain't got the money. We could right get put off the bus. We about to be homeless, okay? Because I guess 
Dorothy thought that, you know, she could, I, I'd done that before, you know, on the bus. I've done that before where, you know, I've only paid to go to the D.C. line and it's an extra dollar and 50 cent to go to the Maryland line. So, you know, I tried it before, too. OK, you know, but anyway, the two get put off the bus. Right. The lady ain't got no money. Next come a series of frantic phone calls to everybody. This bitch Dorothy don't even have a plan for her and her baby. That's why I say it's so easy to have a child around here, but you make everybody take a test to get a driver's license. Sitting there in the bus station watching Dorothy make frantic collect calls on the payphone. Okay, a collect call is this. Okay, well, you know, y'all still know what that is because ninjas still do that from jail, so you know what that is. I felt like shit. Sugar on the floor. Seemed like my life had spilled out of a jar. Homeless, scattered, looking up into the Fresno night, wondering how the hell Dorothy was going to get us out of this one. Your Uncle Frank coming. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the one uncle on the mother's side that's not crazy, okay? Remember, she got an uncle named Robert that ended up in a asylum, a insane asylum, but Uncle Frank... He's more um, settled, okay? He worked as an offshoreman, offshore shoreman, salesman, not a salesman, but he had a stable job, okay? Uncle Frank came and got the baby. Don't worry, baby, don't worry. We know your mammy is crazy. We're gonna try to do the best we can with you. And, uh, you know, I'm just gonna take you home to me and my wife, Mary. Mary was the problem. Okay, because Murray was one of them old insecure hoes that don't want no woman, even if it's family, to be close to her man. That's ridiculous to me. So it was a two bedroom apartment. The kids had a room and Mary and the uncle had a room. Little James Zetta slept on the couch. Okay, now James Zetta is like, okay, I don't have a room, but I'm on the couch. Okay, at least I'm with somebody stable, right? Or at least, you know, as stable as she can be. James Zetta loved or secretly loved how her Aunt Mary, the crazy bitch, okay? She loved how Aunt Mary had the kids um, doing chores around the house. It gave them a sense of discipline and James Zetta liked that discipline. She liked being a part of something bigger. So she said what she would do is kind of kiss up to Mary's ass. One, because she knew she wasn't, you know, a part of the original family, but she is blood. Aunt Mary, you full of shit. Okay. Aunt Mary, because I mean, this little girl is your husband's niece. You should be loving James Zetta like it's your blood niece. James Zetta says she came up with a plan. She gonna kiss Aunt Mary's ass so that Aunt Mary don't kick her out, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna take care of all the chores around here because I don't want this woman to have a reason as to why she need to get me up out of here, okay? Because this is the best thing smoking for me right now, okay? The pattern set in LA carried over to San Francisco. Things would go smoothly for a while, and then here comes my mother. Usually, it happened on the weekends when I was supposed to do my chores. Uh, Dorothy would just show up on the weekends. The weekends when Etta was scheduled to do her chores, right? And Uncle Frank, although he the man of the house, he's still scared of Aunt Mary. So right. when uh, Dorothy would show up to come get Etta, Aunt Mary would cuss her ass out. Hey, don't be popping up in here. We got a routine over here. Now, don't don't come over here thinking that you, you your baby is too good to do uh, chores around here. Dorothy like, no, that's not it. That's not it. But even way, why, why my baby got to do chores? Uh, Mary like, uh, because she live in this house, girl. If you don't like my rules, then you and your baby can get the fuck out. Now, Frank, Uncle Frank, he's still a little scurry. He ain't trying to go back and forth with his wife, so he's just, okay, all right, uh, uh, Etta, you know, call, hit my number, call me collective if you need me, but I'm not about to fight my wife for your crazy ass mother. Right. Dorothy never kept much food, and when I stayed with her, I learned to make butter and sugar sandwiches with the heel of the bread. As before, she disappeared without warning. I'd hear things on the street like, your mother worked at the club Ebenon, she's a barmaid up there, she works with some magic man. When I'd ask Dorothy, though, she'd give me some runaround reply. Okay? 
Dorothy was doing everything. Some people ain't meant to have a nine to five girl. So her mother was that person. Aunt Cozy, on the other hand, was a cold-blooded professional. I liked going to her place in San Francisco because she was a straight talker, and even more, I'd get to snoop around. By now, I knew exactly what she was up to. She'd give me extra change to wash her dishes, empty the trash, and sweep the floor. She had this little room where she'd entertain these, mer these merchant seamen. I'd see them slip their five and ten dollar bills under the door. Cozy always had a nice car. She kept herself together. Eventually, Uncle James wasn't slick enough to keep up with her. See, Cozy liked the Bay Area because of the steady supply of customers selling into the ports. She'd snatch up one and nothing flat. He'd lay up with her for a couple of nights and maybe even marry her. Truth be told, she was married to more than one at the same time. Cozy had herself some fine young merchant marines. She'd be getting checks from all over the world. Aunt Cozy was some operator. Aunt Cozy, Aunt Cozy is a mentor. You hear me? All you hussies around here, y'all doing it wrong. Y'all doing it wrong. I don't know why y'all keep hunching right, right, but the lights is off. Aunt Cozy married the two, three, four, five, eight men getting checks from everywhere, getting spousal support from everywhere. Ooh, God, Cozy. My Uncle Frank tried his best to give me a home life, but between Dorothy and Mary, there was only so much he could do. Besides, I was growing more difficult by the day. I was full of resentment. So now, Etta's in this school, right? It's mandatory for her to sing in the glee club. Mm -mm. She don't want to sing. She lackluster at the singing, okay? She's very, uh, no, answer no, I'm not doing it. I'll stand here, but I'm not doing it, right? So the school officials are getting in contact with Dorothy, like her ass could do anything, right? But they getting in contact with Dorothy. Dorothy comes down to the school. What the hell is going on here? What's going on here, Etta? What the hell is going on here, okay? The school officials say, uh, why is your daughter's attitude so bad? She in Glee Club, she don't want to do nothing but look. Dorothy says, well, my daughter don't want to sing because the child can sing. Etta looking at her mammy, you fucking rat. Damn rat. I can't depend on your ass for nothing. Rat. She still ain't, it don't matter. She still don't want to sing. She said she would sing, but it would still lack luster. Okay, you're not going to make me do nothing I don't want to do. My feelings been hurt about singing since my daddy took me from, uh, what is that, the St. Paul Baptist Church years ago. Okay, she is now starting to play hooky. Okay, she done joined some gangs. Now she doing gang shit. I right? started bouncing from school to school. So they put me in a continuation school, which is your last stop before they kick your ass out of the system altogether. This was when Dorothy had moved into a rooming house in the Fillmore owned by Reverend Wilson, a gay preacher. I told you, she don't care. She don't care. She is telling everybody's business. She don't care if you was on drugs. She don't care if you was gay. She don't care. He okay. reminded me of the secret angels. I had known men like Professor Hines who had such a wonderful way of singing and speaking. Dorothy, on the other hand, hated him. She was convinced he was a child molester and warned me to stay away from him. Now know this, remember in part one, I think I explained to you that the sister Cozy, Aunt Cozy had explained to young Etta that the reason why your mammy is so troubled because when she was young, she went around there and got touched, okay? So the mother Dorothy constantly dealt with fears of her being taken advantage of again while selling vagina and her daughter being taken advantage when of. When I got home from school, he'd always have food waiting for me. He made me feel safe. In my crazy new world, Reverend Wilson was an island of sanity. Remember I told you that Etta ain't that good, sweet, you know, singing in the church girl no more. Now she playing hooky, all right, and stealing shits. What she would do is her and her Judy would steal 
costume jewelry from J.J. Newsberry. Sell it to the corner candy store owner and buy blues records. One of my first was Guitar Slim's The Things I Used to Do. Now her crazy mother, Dorothy, is like, get that devil music out of here. Get it out of here. You're going to end up in one of them juke joints. According to Dorothy's mother, one of them juke joints was the place where all the nasty, heathen, demons, uh, you know, hunched and everything like that. And I'm saying, wait a minute, Dorothy, ain't you there every day? I was a different person. I left the little church girl back in L.A. I wasn't given time to mourn the loss of mama. And I think those feelings got stuffed somewhere else into restlessness and rebellion. Back then, if you'd asked me if I was unhappy or angry, I'd have looked at you like you were nuts. I didn't think, didn't analyze, didn't consider my situation. I just was and stayed that way for a long time to come. Around the corner from Reverend Wilson Rooming House in the Fillmore lives Sugar Pie DeSanto, whose real name was Um Palia Balaton. She was my age and a gorgeous, four foot 11 dynamo with a Filipino father and a black Philadelphia mother with a Puerto Rican temper and 10 brothers and sisters. Sugar Pie and I ran in a gang together. Later, we'd wind up recording together. Weed was 50 cents a joint. Wine was cheap and so were the thrills. Me and my girlfriends would find some boys, go to somewhere dark in the basement, turn on a red light, and scrunch and wiggle all night long. Everyone sweating and rubbing up against each other. We'd be listening to Lowell Fulson, Roy Milton, Amos Milburn, and Ray Charles. Sugar Pie, okay, her Judy Sugar Pie was sassy, okay? She was a sassy girl. All right. Or she was an attractive girl, according to Etta James. You know, the boys stood in line for her. OK. But when Sugar Pie was busy, they'd be like, Etta, what you doing? You know, Etta's still a virgin at this time, you know, but the Sugar Pie, oh, they wanted some of that sugar. Our girl gang was bold in the Fillmore. We called ourselves the Lucky Twenties and I pulled off some cold blooded stunts. I'm not proud of what I did, but I did it all the same. Okay, so one of the stories goes like this, you know, while she was around there being a juvenile delinquent, okay? She said one day her and her girls were on the court, okay, looking at the boys playing ball, okay? Mm-hmm. Doing everything they can to get the boys' attention. Niggas ain't paying attention to you when sports is on or when they doing the sports. They ain't paying you no mind, child, okay? But a Mexican girl, or a girl that they thought was Mexican, walked up. The boys started gawking at the little girl. The other girls was jealous. Why are they looking at her? Ugh, why are they looking at her? We've been standing here this whole time. Now all of a sudden the niggas can see? Uh-uh. What they did was they beat that little girl up so bad, okay, that they broke her arm. Etta ended up doing some time in juvenile jail for whipping that little girl's ass. And to find out that the girl wasn't Mexican, she was Spaniard, okay? Now there is a difference, but I'm saying to myself, why would you even whoop the little girl, whatever color she was? Why would you whoop it anyway? But those are young, childish things that you do when you're not even thinking about just being human. Another situation, she says she was still on the verge of being dismissed from the school system altogether. I've been living with Dorothy, who was running an elevator at the downtown federal building. Turned out, though, she had lied on her job application, swearing she'd never been arrested. They checked the records and threw her in jail for perjury. So it was back to Uncle Frank's and Aunt Mary's. I knew about Dorothy's previous arrest. I had been there when it happened. First of all, okay, you could go to jail for lying on your goddamn, on a job application? D do you know how, did y'all know that you can go to jail for lying on a job application? you know how many applications I lied on? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, anyway, love bugs. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube.
Now remember this, the same people that we meet on the way up will always be the same people that we meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves you babies. Have a